So my name is Graham Farrell. This is my 1984 Gemini Woody. It's um, hopefully one off in definitely this country in the world, if not. Uh, it took me about three years to build. Uh, about 18 months in the woodwork. I had a bit of trouble um, experimenting with bowing woods. But uh, eventually I uh, learnt that soaking and steaming and pressing and all sorts of stuff, I could, could get there and, and build it. It's a pine frame with a Java redwood panel. Uh, the bolts are all custom made, all through here. I've still got to do the door ones yet. Um, I'll get there when, <laughs> when I get some time. Um, the, the wood rims were um, a custom editor for an old tyre. I wanted to look for a, an old school style sort of feel. So I um, bought the trim rings. The centres actually, uh, the baby moons are a, um, actually a soup ladle, a large size industrial soup ladle um, with many hours of polishing involved in it. And then there's a plate that sits in there as the wood fruit bowl, I call them. Um, in the bodywork, we've done a few things. We've got some louvers happening on the sides here. Um, we've got the Power by Zuzu. They're from a couple of rocker covers. The Power by from the Ford rocker cover, and your Zuzu's off the Gemini rocker covers. Welded in, panelled, and you get a you get a unique idea. These are the, the flutes come from uh, Gemini sedans, the early model sedans. I try to use as many Gemini parts as I can because I've got lots of Gemini parts, so I try and use them up when I can. Went for an old school mirror look right through the whole car, uh, right down to original NASCO uh, HK mud flaps. Uh, front end was fully custom built. Um, I wanted to go for a twin light idea. Gemini's never come out with twin lights. So with the help of swap meets and uh, some friends, I uh, managed to score some Triumph buckets with a HQ trim ring and um, a standard aftermarket replacement globe and the, uh, the mesh covers from, or EHs mainly had the mesh covers, and um, try to get a, an old school with the mesh and things like that you just don't see on the, on the modern and newer cars. Uh, trim work inside was done by me and a fellow by the name of Graham Johns, a very good trimmer for the hot rod people, and uh, you get together with him, have a bit of a chat, and he nuts out an idea for you and what you want to do and what I want to do. And uh, so you did basically the sewing for me, and I did the rest of the trim. Uh, the whole car was pretty much done by me, um, right from rust work, sandblasting, uh, final pa or paint, all the paint, <laughs> um, the woodwork, upholstery, all the suspension all been sandblasted, painted, uh, many sandings, we've got that many thumb marks and stuff <laughs> where I've actually worn through and had blood coming out of my thumbs from sanding over my tyres. I uh, went for a, uh, a fallen tree look with the display. Uh, got a large stump at the back and sort of working its way up to the, the trees at the front. So I'm, I'm hoping that will take me up to the best display today. But, uh, there's a couple of out there in the individual displays that might give me a run for my money. So there we go. Uh, trying to chrome up the outside. So the older cars had a lot of chrome where, modern, again, modern cars have um, a lot of black or plastic. Uh, about the 80s they started to change to black. Uh, door handles and stuff like that. Um, basically a safety concern with, with reflections for other cars and door handles and wipers and that. So I found around I got chrome door handles and the, the, the stainless steel wipers and stuff like that, trying to bring up that shine that the older cars used to, to run with. Uh, dash, dash is basically a standard Gemini dash uh, with a, uh, a late model sports um, cluster in it, it's just got the taco and the extra few gauges of stuff already in the dash. I've added a couple of gauges to it. Uh, wooden door handles are mine. Um, played around with many ideas, what shapes and that in it, come back to a standard Gemini shape and just uh, carved them up from there and bolted them in. All the pine is actually a solid pine wood. Uh, and I've tried to keep it as whole as I can. It, these are actually been, they're a 12 mil plate or 12 mil uh, pine, and they've just been bowed. Soak for three days, put them in a press, let them dry, crack it, start another one. <laughs> um, whereas you get these sort of larger panels through the back here, they're actually hand carved. Um, we're talking about two to three days work per piece of wood, uh, fitting on another body with a bit of um, indicator marking behind, rub it up again, just take a bit more, just keep wearing off the wear marks until you've got what you've got. <laughs> They were very large chunks, all different shapes, and um, eventually got the joints together, and then I could shape the whole thing then. 
and they come right through the back here. It's all pretty much solid. Being the wood for the rear tailgate, it was very, very hard. Many, many pieces went in. Trying to get a 90 degree bend in a piece of wood is very high, so. But patience, effort, you get there. Engine bay, try to get some old school stuff into the engine bay. Uh, try to, uh, rather than use uh, rubber pipes where I could, I tried to use a bit of copper pipe. Uh, if you've um, noticed an old uh, the tea buckets, that particularly, um, they're very old original vintage cars. A lot of uh, copper type pipe work and stuff was used um, throughout the throughout the build room. So again, try to simulate it. So try to get rid of plastic out of the engine bay. I'm sort of getting there. <laughs> Bands give way at the moment, but it's hard. Uh, all the suspensions, all Gemini stuff. Um, various models and that all combined to give me lowness and height and all that sort of type stuff. But that's all pretty much standard sort of fare, so it kept the, the ADR guys and the police happy. So when I went for licence, it was a, a standardish car that was being dressed up. And that would be about it.